Automatic Addison. In this tutorial, we will learn how to run ROS2 on different machines using the ROS domain ID environment variable. So we will use the built-in demo nodes CPP package. Let me just show you that here. We're going to open a terminal and let's do ROS2 package lists. This comes installed when you install ROS2. Go all the way up. Demo nodes CPP. There it is. So demo node CPP. And we're going to use this as an example. So we're going to run a talker node on one machine to broadcast hello world messages over a topic called chatter. And we will run a listener node on another machine. And we did this way, way, way back when. Way, way, way back when we did this. Uh, back in the ROS2 beginner tutorials. So I'm just going to open up a new terminal. Okay. So what you need to do first when you're trying to run ROS2 on multiple machines is you need to make sure they're both on the same Wi-Fi network. So connect both machines to the same Wi-Fi network or connect them using an Ethernet cable. So I like to do host name space hyphen I. Okay, you need to make sure that the IP address is the same on all computers. And then once you do that, you need to check the ROS domain ID. So what, what is the ROS domain ID? Okay, so let's open two terminals right here. Oh, 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 oh. Two terminal windows. Terminal one, this is gonna stand for the first machine and then terminal two will be the second machine. Just imagine we had two different computers, okay? And let's talk just really quickly about what's called the ROS domain ID, okay? The ROS domain ID, it's like this, ROS domain ID. It's like a unique channel number that allows ROS2 nodes to communicate with each other when they are set to the same value. So it prevents interference from other ROS2 systems on the same network. And the default ROS domain ID is zero. And safe values range from zero to 101 inclusive. All right. So it's just learn by doing. So Imagine this terminal window is your first machine. Actually, to make it easier, I'm going to close this. Let's open up Terminator. Okay, I'm going to make it easier so you can see here. So this is machine one. This is machine two. Okay, machine one and Terminator, machine two. All right, and machine one, I want to set the ROS domain ID because right now it's at zero. So I'm going to do export. Ross domain ID equals five. Okay. Let's do echo just to make sure that's set. Echo and then dollar sign Ross domain ID. And we can see five right here. Now over here, when I do echo, dollar sign Ross domain Let's move this over. ID. Got nothing, so it's defaulted to zero. Now, over here in the first machine, run the talker node. ROS2, run demo nodes. CPP, and then talker. Here we go. Publishing hello world. Okay, and we do a ROS2. ROS2 topic list. On the second machine, you can see nothing is here. You have no chatter topic. But if I go over here, split this horizontally, and I do ROS, first we have to export ROS domain ID equals five. And I do a ROS2 topic list. And you can see we've got the chatter topic. And we do ROS2 topic echo chatter. And you can see we've got the messages being published by the publisher. Okay. So this is our first machine using ROS domain ID 5 and our second that right now has ROS domain ID 0. So now let's set the ROS domain ID to be five over here on the second machine so, so they can communicate with each other. So export ROS domain 
ID equals five. Now watch what happens when I do Ross two topic list. I've got the chatter topic. And now I have run the listener for Ross to run demo nodes CPP listener. We got the messages from the publisher over here. You can see hello world 96, hello world 96. So the listener node on the second machine, because it's got the same ROS domain ID as the first machine, okay, it can receive messages from the talker node. Now press control C on the second machine, the one with the listener node. What about, what happens if we set the ROS domain ID to eight? Okay, let's run the listener again. Nothing, absolutely nothing. The listener over here in the second machine no longer receives messages from the talker node because they are on different ROS domain IDs. Okay, now let's go, let's do this. So what you would do, so how in a real application would you make the ROS domain ID change permanent? You would do this, you would do get it, hyphen dot bash RC, and you go down here to the bottom of your bash RC file, and you do something like this, export, same thing you, you put that down here, the same thing you type in the terminal, export ROS domain ID equals five. I'm not gonna do it right now, but this is what you would do, ROS domain ID five. Okay, let's just X out of that, cancel. No, exit, close without saving. Okay, and then after you do that, you would source the bash file, bash RC, source it. Okay, and then you would rerun the listener. So you'd rerun this command, ROS to run demo node CVP listener, and then everything will be working. So that's how you would make that change permanent for the ROS domain ID. Let's do control C and everything. So that's it. So by following the steps in this tutorial, you can run ROS2 nodes on different machines. Again, the first step, make sure they're on the same Wi-Fi network, and then just set the ROS domain IDs to what you want on both machines. After that, you are good to go. You're good to go. That's it. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Keep building.